My damp bottom on a towel slung on the wooden slatted bench. I'd only spoken to her the day before and I knew there was nothing on the horizon. Though there had been. Up until a few days ago, we'd been earmarked for a particularly difficult teenager, badly in need of a calm, stable home. But as often happens in fostering, there was a game changer. Just a day before all concerned were due in court, a grandparent had kindly stepped forward to offer to take the child in. And so the case had been dropped. And to the great relief of all concerned. So we were expecting a lull now. Hence all the me time. Till another long-term placement came up, we were only really doing respite, and that mostly for our most recent child, Milla, who was now in a residential school and with a new primary carer, Mavis. I know, I still replied, and I'm so sorry to bother you in the middle of your swimming, but that mini-break you said you and Mike were hoping to jet off on, I immediately wished we had, because I had a hunch I knew what was coming. A lull in the world of fostering was never guaranteed to be anything more than 24 hours, and more often than not, it wasn't. I suspected this was the situation here, that an urgent case had presented itself. I wasn't wrong. But no, not as yet. I said, shouldn't I? Possibly not. At least if you're up for taking a child on. Do you know Kenny and Steve Blackwell live out in the sticks and have two small children? Indeed I do, I said. And pretty well. I was Kelly's mentor for a year. Mentoring had always been the unofficial practice in fostering. But over the last couple of years, it had become an even more important part of the process. One in which longer term, more experienced carers were expected to take on the role of mentor to new carers just coming into the field. In my case, this meant Kelly, who I'd met up with fairly regularly to discuss any problems she might be having and exchange ideas on the best strategies deal with them. We'd also swap numbers and email addresses so that we could be on hand in an emergency. It was yet another item on our ever-expanding job descriptions, but I didn't mind. It built relationships, and up to now, it had worked well. Ah, uh, yes, of course you were, Christine went on. I remember seeing it on your file now I come to think about it. Even better then, because it'll give you some context. The problem is the young lad they have in at the moment. The top and bottom of it is that they can no longer hold on to him, and we were wondering if you might be able to help out, either for the short term until we find another long-term carer, obviously, or longer term if that's something you want to think about. But I was thinking more about calm, capable Kelly. Both she and her husband seem pretty good carers to me. Kelly can't take care of him? I asked, surprised. She wasn't usually phased by much. Why? And how old is he? What's his story? Christine laughed. You remember telling me about how your son can ask 20 questions in the same sentence? Well, now I know where he gets it from, don't I? <laughs> OK. Well, first of all, you should know that had we not been thinking about you for that teenager, that didn't materialise, we would have asked you to take on this one in the first place. He's a little lad called... Sam Goff.